8.5 Judeo-Greek. The Judeo-Greek language is known from medieval times onward. It contains an element of Hebrew and Aramaic origin in its vocabulary and grammar, and it is written in Hebrew characters. Since the 15th century, there is also an element of Turkish origin. Three examples of the Hebrew element are Yavan, meaning Greece. It's an overextension, though, from Ionia, which is the Ionian island, which is actually the Hebrew for Greece. A Yavani is a Greek. Uh, and a Chamor is a donkey. That's vocabulary in Judeo-Greek. And a Chamor also means a dunce. And Achlanzis, from Hebrew meaning Achlan, someone who eats a lot, is actually a glutton. So taking the Hebrew word for glut, for to eat and giving it a Greek uh, twist and it turns into glutton. The earliest Judeo-Greek glosses, like vocabulary uh, indexes, are considered to be those in the Aruch from 1101, the Talmudic Dictionary by Rabbi Natan ben Yechiel of Rome. Two other early documents are a fragment of Ecclesiastics, translated into Greek, and a translation of Jonah containing elements foreign to the language spoken in the 13th century. A fragment of Greek Mashnaic glossary of 124 Hebrew words with their Greek equivalents has been assigned to the 10th or 11th century because of the colloquial phenomenon familiar with Byzantine epigraphy. And a Hebrew manuscript of 99 words probably dates from about 1200 and it's in... Uh, the uh, Bibliothèque Nationale, the National Library in Paris. A parchment manuscript of the Book of Jonah was found in Crete, and uh, it's dated from 1263. Uh, Dalvin explained that because the language is a living experience with changes with each generation, place, and time, no complete precise analysis of oral or written Judeo-Greek can be given. Invading Normans, Slavs, Serbs, Albanians, and Turks have all left their linguistic traces on, Jude on Greek spoken in Yanina. But far the most dominant of these traces is Turkish. So the many Turkish words, including Arabic words, incorporated into Turkish, which entered the Greek language, added a colorful ingredient to the melodic vernacular Greek spoken amongst all the inhabitants of Yanina. Several of these Turkish words found their way into the Greek Judeo-Greek hymns. There had been contact between Epirus and Italy since antiquity, and a number of Italian Jews settled in Yanin at the beginning of the 19th century. So the Italian loanwords in the Greek spoken in Yanina and in the Epirus region is to be expected. The Venetian capture of Prevost in 1684 added Venetian wor words which are found in Judeo-Greek hymns. Judeo-Greek has, has also loan words from Albanian, French, Serbian, and Slavic. So, for example, of a, a Greek influence, the Yanina Jews have a reception room in their home called the Camera di Vetseveri, derived from the Italian. Another example of, from Salamanga, an author, is marzapades, from the Italian word marzapane, which in English became marzapan. Then Bonga notes that there are Italian words by the Jews of Yanina, like carrozza, a carriage, levanta, perfume, and cassata, a cheese patty. So, for example, a Turkish loan word would be, for stockings, would be tsurepia uh, uh, in Yanina, and the Turkish word which came into Greek was tsurapia. And then there's a further diversion because in Yanina the Jews called it Kurepia and not Tsurepia or Tsurapia. Um, the Yanina Jews pronounce the Albanian word for cucumber Kastravetsi as Kastraveki. And uh, then Dalvin heard the pronunciation even as Kastraveci. Uh, Salamanca claims that the Yanina Jews pronounce the Turkish Guiomi for a clay jug as Guikum or Giyum. So obviously in oral Judeo-Greek, there are other variations which aren't based on uh, anything written. So 
and agada becomes agada because in Greek there's no H. And then the 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 G has a hard G sound because it's from Hebrew from the Hebrew gimel as opposed to the Greek gamma, which is a more guttural ayin. In the case of the word havdalah, the Yanina Jews pronounced it avdalah because they didn't have the H. And the Yanina Jews pronounce Megillah, a scroll, as Migla, or, or Tevila, for immersion, as Tivla, which conforms to epirotic speech. In uh, written Judeo-Greek, Dalvin talks about not six categories. I'll give a few, few examples. So you have Hebrew roots and Greek suffixes. suffixes. So... The Hebrew menorah, which in Hebrew is Chanukiah, in Judeo-Greek is Chanukariah. So a Talmudic student, a Talmud, would become Talmiditu, with, which has a Greek genitive suffix. And then Shabbat, in Judeo-Greek, becomes Shabbatiu. In other words, the phenomenon of belonging to that noun. So you have half Hebrew, half Greek phrases. In the Judeo-Greek phrase, Maton Adonai, by God, and Maton Kol Nidre, uh, Adonai and Kal Nidre are Hebrew, and the other two words in each phrase are Greek. So in the expression, Mivrikan Pola Tsaros, many wo woes have found me, only the last word is Hebrew, and the other three words are Greek. In the expression, Ton Pira A Akadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He, took him, he died. The first two words are Greek, and the last two are in Hebrew. In the phrase, kalo moes, moed, kalo, good, is Greek, and moed is the Hebrew moed, meaning holiday. The expression, timakot epase, what plague hit him or her, is used when one can't understand a person's behavior. Makot, or the a plague, plagues in Hebrew, is familiar from the Passover service. So the first and the last words, though, are Greek. The expression, Kaloras ke lichanavis, may the prophet Eliyahu be near you, is derived from the Greek, Kali ora, good hour, and the Hebrew name Eliyah, and the Hebrew word anavi, meaning the prophet, it should be hanavi, but since there's no he, an epirotic in Greek, so that it becomes anavi, meaning the prophet. Um... The category of Hebrew words and expressions. So, for example, they have the word Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Mazal Tov, have a happy Sabbath, uh, we wish you good luck, Sedaqat, charity, Besiman Tov. And then they hear there's a few Hebrew words in Yanina, which like are part of the language, like Avara, which is a memorial. Amalek is this non-Jewish tribe, a symbol of evil. Barminyan is an Aramaic word meaning may it not happen to us. Gezira or Gedzira, an evil decree, is from the Hebrew Gezira. Lashon Hara, or in Yanina is pronounced Lashon Hara, which is malicious gossip. A catastrophe is Mashchitim, which is has a, a, li a little bit different meaning in Hebrew, which isn't necessarily so de uh, devastating. The Hebrew, may you be like, uh, may you have a, a, a complete recovery, is Rifuah Shlima. But in Yanina, it was Rifah Selima. Uh, a, a Sachal is a stupid fool. Or a Sakai is a pure, innocent, in a moral sense. Uh, they're Greek words used metaphor metaphorically in Judeo Greek for Hebrew concepts. In the creation of the world, world, izimiguria to kosmu, a hymn written in Yanina, the word grama, meaning letter, is capitalized in the middle of a sentence to make the word mean Torah. Now, the uh, last category that Dalvin uh, lays out here is predominantly Hebrew express expressions used by Yanina Jews when they don't want their Christian compatriots to know what they're saying. So, Ein Ara, literally meaning the evil eye. Another saying would be, Ein Emunah Bagoy, you can't trust an Anjou. Uh, Lasara Ke 
me epernes, don't say anything, or lasareke mi laceris, don't do anything, or mumzer odies, he is a bastard. The article, the uh, the, the is Greek. Um, there's the there's the saying, "Meditors diburim." Don't speak, meaning coming from the French "dir" to say in the Hebrew "dibur" word. "Me" is the Greek negative. And last but not least, ten and en, enayim, literally put your eyes on it, used in the marketplace to alert a Jewish vendor to keep a double watch to guard his merchandise against theft. Here, here's a 1902 song in, from Corfu, and um, it, which it's, it's taken from a Greek song dance tune, and it's an original Greek dirge of a mother over the loss of a son in a far distant country. Okay. But the Jews put in all sorts of stuff. They talk about Purim. They talk about rabbis and, and, and chachamim. And um, the, the whole, because of the Judeo-Greeks, the whole uh, form was changed. Um, since you don't understand Greek, I won't give all these examples. There was another song that was sung on the first of Adar, the, the Rosh Chodesh, the new moon, which was called Irtame. And it had Turkish words, and it, it must have been composed during the Ottoman period after 1453. And, um, but it, the rhymes, the meter, and the accents are strict, as, but, but in accordance with Greek language. And, uh, for example, it has uh, eight syllables to the line, except in the introductory stanza. So these are all various diversions. It doesn't mean a lot to you, but it just shows that the, the Jews had various diversions from uh, the Greek of, uh, of their Ionian or Ionian neighbors. Okay, the, all right, now the use of Venetian. The best, better class of the Jewish community of Corfu speaks the Venetian dialect of some modifications due to the influence of the Greek, which was the only means of oral communication amongst the first settlers of the island. The latter language, which gradually disappeared as, one, as a living one before the newcomer, bequeathed to it a certain amount of its vocabulary and some of its syntactic peculiarities. So, the constant solution of the infinitive, chedigo, or napo, is the, uh, is, 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 uh, the, the Jewish phenomenon. The Venetian of the Corfu Jews accordingly differs from the same dialect as but the non-Jews in the town. A characteristic of this dialect is the formation of the O, or the, in, in Greek omega, the omicron, with, a, with an accent on it, of the plural of no, nouns ending in A with an accent. A formation which originated in the Hebrew ending vav tav, ot, simplified according to the laws, Italian laws of phonolo phonology. And so in other words, where in Greek it should have been an alpha with, a, with an accent, it, because of the Venetian ending, it becomes an O. So, that, so in other words, uh, a bracha, a blessing, would now become a baracho. Or uh, the city, sito, uh, sita becomes sito. And that, that you won't have uh, in, in, in any other um, instance. Now, there's also instances of Apulian on um, the speech, since many of the Jews were from Apulian, also Sicilian origin. So the borrowing of extended to words expressing family connections, like patri, matri, frati, plural, the plural fraturi, soru, figu, niputi, maritu, carusu, but also to words like for wedding. So like in Greek, a, a wedding is a gamos, but because they had a different ending from this Apulian Italian, it became gamu as opposed to gam, ga, ga, uh, gamos, and the plural, which should be in Greek gami, became gamuri. 
So the simple past tense, viti, vidisti, and viti, is the only one in use amongst the Apulian Jews, who agree in this respect with the Apulians of the Italian coast. They differ from the latter, however, in the forming the future, which is expressed by meaning, means of the auxiliary anzu, I have, as on the continent, and following an infinitive, infinitive, which is always, as in modern Greek, resolved. So such resolution... Uh, occurs frequently in a pulley itself with particles mu or mi, but not as regularly in Corfu, where the exception are forms like lu manzari, lu mibiviri, and a few others uh, which, which are not known for their infinitive forms today. So, whereas uh, Apulians would say diru, agu diri, and Agu mi mudici, all for saying, like they said. In, in Corfu, it's anzu se dicu. You, you would see it better written out, but we don't have it. So, um, now there's Apulian suffixes which appear in Judeo Italian of Corfu. So, for example, the plural of horses would be cavadu. Uh, the word that would be chidu, C-H-I-D-D-H-U. And um, this is totally different than, than Greek and, um, and, and, regu and regular Italian. Um, so there were, of course, loan words. And so they have all sorts of Italian, mixed Apulian and Hebrew combinations. So, for example... Um, a, a, f a saying uh, me, which means mind would be tamen solicitatevi or uh, or skin would be lu koryu not la not l not eel okay so so this l u is different much different um, di la carni sua, or army would be la ostia, and coming from the sky would be di li cieli. So, so m because of the Holocaust, all this is gone, so very few people uh, are, are survived. And then names, for example, Abraham would become Abra Abram, or from Greek, Abramaki, or Bambi, Bamboli. Abramino or Nino. So Solomon would become Selomo, or from, Gra from Greek Selomaki, Makri, Salomon or Salomon. Sarah would become Sarah, Sarina, Oari, Oaro, Oarulu, o and that O is an, o uh, an, uh, an Omega in Greek, and or new, or Sandra. And Rebecca would be Rivga, Rico, Rishetta, or, en, or Enrichetta. And last but not least, Simcha would be Micho, Michoni, Miheta, Simichula, Allegra, Allegrina, or in, uh, as in Greek, Ephthimia. Uh, 